Hi, John here from Benson Alfa Romeo and Fiat in Greer, South Carolina. There's my card if you need to reach me. I'm going to step back here for a minute. You're looking at a brand new 2022 Alfa Romeo Stelvio Sprint. This is a base car, but it has some nice options on it, and it's an anodized blue. We're going to go through and do its final checks before it's delivered to the customer, and I want to show you once again uh, information about checking your battery posts and make sure that they're clean so uh, let's get into it we're going to go back to the back here and hit the button to raise it up we still have the battery connected of course got all my tools ready to show you uh, this is the battery compartment right here it hits underneath this little cover you'll see your tow ring for um, if you ever had to tow it on a flatbed it fits in the front and back and a screwdriver uh, but in here is a battery compartment. On the Julia, the battery compartment will be over to the right, and there'll be a cabinet door, those same type of fasteners on it. You just turn them with your thumb to open it up. And when you look inside, you're going to see pretty much the same thing. So this is our battery. This is a gel cell battery. It's made by Varta, as you can see. That's an ISO 9001 company. They do make a pretty good battery, but during shipment, sometimes you'll see a little bit of corrosion that happens. And even though this is a brand new car, if you have a car that you've been riding around with and maybe you might have a little battery corrosion develop and you don't even know it. So this is a very important protocol that needs to be done on our al alphas that come over from overseas. So on the left we have the negative ground, on the right we have the positive. So let's go ahead and disconnect this negative ground right here and to do that you push this little button and pull this connector right off. Okay, and then we want to take our 10 millimeter socket right here you got a little quarter drive and just go counterclockwise we're going to pull that off and take this off i'm going to look underneath it looks pretty clean but as you can see you got a little bit of gray right here on the top and this is a little bit of surface corrosion that's come from the shipment of the car from overseas so we're going to clean that off and put a little gel on there to protect it so we don't need to have a low voltage condition or weak continuity situation that will cause a false flag check engine light and all that sort of thing that uh, many of you experienced here in North America. So let's set this aside so the car is totally disconnected. And then we're going to go over here. We're going to push these two buttons and we're going to lift up this little cover plate. This is for our uh, positive side. Here's your positive and you can see the positive post and you can see the way it's um, fastened down. It has these two little screws right here. They're little Phillips screws and they go into holes. And you can see the corresponding holes on the uh, left hand side of the battery which are not used. But anyway, we're going to take this off and we're going to take this up uh, to uh, take this up and take this off right here in order to get to this post. And as you can see, it's got a little bit of gray on it and uh, you know, that's a little bit of surface corrosion. We're going to go ahead and take care of that. This car is not exhibiting any problems whatsoever, but um, anyway, we're going to get to it. So I'm going to set the phone down over here so that you can see while I'm working in the cabin. All right, there we go. We got a good view of everything. All right, and we're going to go ahead and take our little Phillips electric screwdriver, and we're going to take up these two little screws right here. You don't need to take them all the way out, just about three quarters of the way up. Okay, that side, the near side. You can use a number two Phillips screwdriver, of course. I'll put that back down in there just a little bit so it doesn't get away from us. We don't need to remove it completely. Okay, then we're gonna take our 10 millimeter socket. I once again go counterclockwise on this nut. And we're going to back that off a few turns. We're gonna gently and carefully lift this fuse assembly off of the battery post connection. Okay. Just wiggle it just a little bit. It usually comes off pretty easily. There we go. Very gentle. Okay, let's flip it over. If you can see, you want to make sure that this is clean as a whistle. Make sure you don't have any corrosion and you can see some lighter gray shades here. This is corrosion that's come in from the salt air. It needs to be removed. 
If not, this will grow over a period of time. It'll give you a false flag. It'll give you a low voltage condition, weak continuity, and then you'll see your uh, stop start function won't work. And that means the battery has gone below 70% charge. Remember, a battery is a two way street, it has to charge and has to discharge. So, in order to fix this, we're going to go in here, take our little cleaning tool. This is something you can get at any AutoZone, Advance, or O'Reilly's. Um, any, any store is going to have them. I'm going to clean this off. Okay. I'm going to go over here to the negative side, clean it off. I also have a wire brush. It's just a little hardware store wire brush. We're gonna go ahead and clean any of this patina off of here. You wanna make sure you get it nice and clean. You just need to do this once. It's important that you don't have any corrosion that would enable it to continue. A lot of times someone will complain and have an issue with the battery dealership replaces the battery but they don't clean off the corrosion that comes in from the ocean voyage and then they have problems again and they wonder oh it's another battery or the standard battery is no good this is an 800 or 95 amp hour uh, 800 amp uh, battery right here so it's a good battery but remember it has to charge and discharge okay now we've got the post cleaned up and we're going to go in here with another little tool this is just my little um, cleaning tool. We're going to clean this aluminum band clamp and you can see where Alpha uses an aluminum band clamp. They use a CAD plated bolt on a lead post. This is not a good combination because as many people know dissimilar metals can cause corrosion when those three metals meet and you know it's just a fundamental issue. Let's go ahead over here and clean up our negative. And if you notice, there's a little bit of patina on this nut right here. This nut should be shinier than it is. So that's a telltale sign. So even if you don't, if you want to inspect your car, you can open up the back and take a look at it. Put your finger on the top of the post, see if you get any gray patina. Now this is the connector post, and we're just going to make sure it's clean. All right. I'm satisfied with this now. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're gonna take our no corrode uh, battery protector. Now there's many kinds out there, it doesn't matter. Uh, this one's a brand new one I just bought. It's battery terminal and cable protector. It's a little gel, it's kind of like Vaseline. Matter of fact, you can actually use Vaseline if you had to. But I'm gonna take this open pack and I'm gonna show you how I put it on here. So I take a little dab here and I put it on my negative post. Take another dab. I'll put it on the receiver, just put it in there. You don't need a thick coat, just a little bit. Take another little bit right here. I'm gonna put a little bit on this post connector right here, a little quick disconnect. That's your intelligent battery sensor right there, by the way. Okay, let's go to the other side. Let's put a little bit of gel on our positive side. Just take note that when we do this, we want to take our negative off first, and then we want to take the positive side off, then put the positive side back down, and then finally the negative side, okay? That's the order. So negative first and negative last, always negative last. Now I'm gonna coat this up really good on these surfaces because contact surface area, as you can see, this little double band clamp, it doesn't have a lot of surface area, so you want to make sure that you get it good. Okay, now I've got these all coated up, and we're going to go ahead and start putting it back down. Um, now one little note here before we put this assembly in, a lot of you guys have got a 2017 Julia, or you might have an Alpha 4C, and you have a little snap clip um, on the positive side, it's like a little lever. Um, you can replace that. If you notice, I was able to buy this online. It's just a replacement here. It's a double band clamp, just like what I worked on, but you can see there's three nuts here to, uh, this one is not even used, but you can possibly replace that if you want to. 
um, that's one thing you could possibly do if you wanted to go to the new system. After 2017, they started using a 10 millimeter bolt to tie it in a little bit more positively, and that's helpful, but again, an exposed surface is gonna breed corrosion. All right, so now we've got our little connector right here, a little hold down, you see these two little holes. We wanna go ahead and locate that and locate this assembly on the battery terminal itself, and you can see it kinda goes in there pretty easily. Okay, see that? We've sort of landed it right back down where it came from. I don't want to change anything. Okay, it's nice and tight. Let's go ahead and take our little screwdriver and run these screws in. Nice and snug. Don't go too much. Just nice and snug. You're working with plastics. All right, got this nice. Let's go ahead and take our socket. Now we're going to flip it over and go to the tightening. We're going to tighten this 10 millimeter nut up. Where my left finger is, this little black cube, that's your um, pyrotechnic sensor, and that blows if you ever have an airbag deployment that stops the continuity of the battery. So that um, basically allows the um, car to be safer in the case of possible fire or something like that. Okay, so we're done here. We've gone ahead and put these two screws back in. We put gel on here, and we've tightened this up, so we're ready to reinstall our cover. So we just take that. You see it's got the two little tabs right there. You just want to locate it over top of this little connector, snap it in, and you're done on that side. Let's go to our the negative side. Let's go ahead and put our negative on here. Just put this piece on first, put it right down where it came from. Nice and snug. Take our 10 millimeter and go ahead and tighten this up. You don't have to put a ton of torque on it, just nice and tight. Okay, now we're going to take our connector here and we're going to snap it down over and we want this to click. You put it on there and you'll hear a click. Okay, make sure that it's clicked on there. Okay, can't come off. All right, make sure it's got a little bit of play in it. That's what it's supposed to have. Okay, we're all done here. We've done this uh, this protocol right here, so it took us less than 10 minutes. Now, let's go ahead and put this cover back on. And we're gonna go and do our start procedure. Now, uh, before we get into that, I wanna show you something about starter relays. Sometimes you might have a situation where a relay does not actuate if you get low voltage or a weak battery. This relay is up in the engine compartment. I'm gonna show you where it's at. This is your starter relay. And if you notice, there's the part number right there. If you need to order one, you can get one from Alpha, of course. Uh, they do have a superseded number. This used to be about a $6 item, and now uh, the, the new part number, uh, I think it's uh, one digit off, and it's like $40. If you didn't wanna do that, you can just pick up a 30 amp standard relay. Uh, this is an AC Delco. There's the part number up there, and you can see it's a black case, but it's the exact same thing. It does the exact same job. These are very common. So if you're not near an Alpha dealer, you can go ahead and pick one of these up, and it's still about six or seven bucks. Uh, always good to have that in your glove box. So this little relay will allow the car to start. So it's very, very important that you, you know, have it in good working condition. And the way to do that is, of course, to have good continuity at your battery posts. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and close this up right now, but remember, since we've disconnected the battery, we no longer have the ability to hit the button here and, uh, and lock it. By the way, if you ever need to get in your car uh, and open it up without the battery, you can pull this little string right here, it's in this cavity, and that will allow you to uh, get the lift gate open in a case where maybe you uh, had the battery go dead on you. All right, so I'm gonna push this down and just close it manually, okay? And then we're gonna get in the car and we're gonna do our start procedure. But before I do that, I did promise to show you where the relay is. Let's go under the hood here. Of course, a standard two liter Stelvio engine. Here's your uh, point for negative to jump the car off. Here's positive to jump the car off if you had to jump the car one day or anything like that. Remember to leave your cables on for about 15 minutes before you try to start it. 
because these gel cell batteries take a little while to pick up a charge. The starter relay lives in this little box right here. In order to get into it, you have to just, it's got a little quick connect here. Usually you use, use a little screwdriver. You can see where it is right there. You can pop this thing open. And then there's, there's a clip right here, you see. That's to get into this box. And the starter relay is back behind here. There's gonna be two of them. They're probably gonna be red in color. One's the AC relay and one's the um, engine start relay. So uh, in a pinch, if you didn't have a new relay, you could possibly swap them out and that'll get you going. But I would encourage you to pick up a relay. So let's go ahead and um, close this hood right now. By the way, there is your crash sensors right there. And um, of course your water line for uh, the turbo bearing. And that's what you'll hear sometimes when you come off the highway, you'll hear that little pump that's running, it's pushing water through the turbo housing to keep that bearing cool because that bearing can spin up to 225,000 RPMs. So anyway, let's go ahead and close this up. Just sweep the hood down and close it. Now, one thing I want to show you, this is something new. We're talking about making sure we have good continuity, but when we look into this passenger side wheel well, if you notice, there is a little acorn nut right there. See the uh, right on the edge where the paint is? It looks like a little 10 millimeter acorn nut and a cable. That is a ground. So if you are working on your car, um, this is something that's come out in a memo lately to make sure that that is nice and clean and free of debris, of course. And obviously for those of us that are in the salt areas and stuff like that, it's very, very important to keep that clean. So that's something you might want to consider doing. Uh, it's the same uh, location on the Julia. So uh, you can reach it with standard hand tools and uh, it's just, just clean it with a little wire brush, put a little gel on it, put it back down. Okay, now we're gonna get in the car here and we're gonna do our start procedure. Since we've disconnected the battery, we're gonna have a lot of check engine lights when we start the car. So I've got my key here and I've got my foot on the brake and I'm gonna go ahead and start the car. Guess what? We're gonna get a whole bunch of codes. It might even run just a little bit rough. Don't let that worry you. When you disconnect the battery, you're gonna get these. All right, I got my seatbelt on. You see where ESC is on, AST. Um, there's all kinds of other um, things that are flashing up, hill hold control, etc., etc. So, lane departure. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and put this car into drive. So I'm gonna do like I'm normally doing, foot on the brake, put it into drive. I'm gonna roll forward. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a full left lock turn. And come around here. Full left lock. And that means running the steering wheel all the way to the end. Let me get a little bit more room here, all right. I'm on the stop, see I'm on the stop, can't go no further. All right, now I'm going to go forward. I'm gonna do a full right lock turn all the way to the stop. This is gonna reset the, uh, the camera and also the steering. So it will give you a, a way to get all these codes eliminated. You do not need a code reader. All right, I'm gonna come up here short drive straighten out I'm gonna put it in park and I'm gonna turn it off you see my lights are still on all this stuff okay got the car turned off wait a few seconds foot on the brake again press the start all the systems are good you see where all my lights have gone out I didn't need to tow it to a dealership I didn't need to uh, wait a week for somebody to look at it uh, I've done this all myself in less than 10 minutes. And so now the car is right as rain. Let's go ahead and put it into drive again and take another quick short drive. Swing around the dealership lot here. Oh, 
Okay. I'm gonna come up to where we can straighten it out. All right. I'm gonna put the car in park again. And we're gonna turn the car off. Now, uh, I know the codes are already cleared, but let me show you one little trick that's pretty cool. If you wanna check your oil any given morning or any time, simply put your, uh, don't put your foot on the brake, but go ahead and hit your stop start button and you're gonna notice your oil level is gonna come up right here in the center of the pods. Okay, oh, see it right there? That's your oil. So it'll tell you what your oil level is. There's a post on the left and a post on the right. That is uh, 1.6 quarts between the two posts. So if you see it down slightly, um, just very, very carefully add just a little bit of oil at a time. Remember, it takes a synthetic oil. So, um, you know, just make sure. But your car shouldn't use a whole lot of oil at any, in any circumstance. Let's go ahead and hit the start button again. Again, all of our lights are out. Everything's good. Car's in great shape. Now, one of the things that we do is we double check uh, tire pressures before the car goes out. So let me show you how to do that. Just rotate over to your uh, vehicle information and push down if you have a 20, uh, 2021 or 2022 or even uh, the 2020 where they made the changes. Push down and you're going to get your scheduled maintenance. See it's 365 days or 9,545 miles. If you push down one more time on the main uh, main disc you're going to see uh, the pressures and so we'll adjust these pressures before the car is delivered remember a new Alfa Romeo comes in from port it's got 58 pounds of air in the tires so you must make sure that those tires are uh, lowered down on the Stelvio it's usually 36 in the back and 33 in the front so we'll adjust this before we deliver it to the customer so we can go back and you can check your you know your oil change status right here if you push down on it you can see where that is uh, listed there. So, you know, you can get that. Um, typically, if you want to check the oil, you want to press down on that uh, on that, and wait five minutes for it to get an accurate read. Best way to do it is before you start the car in the morning, uh, just go ahead and hit the start button without your foot on the brake, and that'll give you the, uh, um, the oil level at the time. So now, uh, other than that, you know, I hope you have a good experience with your car. You should. The procedure we just did is going to be good for quite a long time. It's very, very important that um, that be done and looked at so you don't have problems. You know, I, I want our customers to be able to go down the road uh, perfectly um, relying on their car and it's working 100% of the time. So once again, thanks for watching this video. There's my card if you need to reach me. You can always send me an email. I'll do my best to try to reply, and uh, I'm on Eastern Time. So, again, thanks again, and if we can ever help, uh, we're happy to do so. Have a good day. Ciao.